Hello, and welcome to episode 7 of Cooking with Grief, a comedy podcast that is the audio equivalent of getting gently kicked in the crotch by an elderly woman with failing eyesight. It's definitely unusual, but could almost certainly be much worse. My name's Chris, and as ever, I'm joined by my mammalian co-host, the author of the book Gobnobblers, a Willy Wonka erotic novel. It's Chris! Hello! So here's uh, how we demand the podcast works. Each of us, Chris and Chris, me being one of the Chris's, and Chris being the other of the Chris's, bring two topics that we've been reading about in a week, a kind of internet show and tell, before getting distracted by something silly and veering off piste, faster than an Olympic ski jumper who suddenly realise that their entire career is completely pointless and bails at the last minute, much to the dismay of their corporate sponsors. So basically, we talk about things that were found interesting in the hope that you do too. So now we've done the introduction and falsely suggested the idea of a rigid format, we'll get going on our first topic. Chris, what have you got for us? For my first topic, I'm going straight into an area we, uh, you know, we we may have agreed to keep out of, which is uh, politics. And admittedly, this is low hanging fruit because I'm going to talk about Donald Trump. But apparently, he has a habit of tearing up papers which he's legally required to keep. And so, White House staff who are on salaries of more than sixty thousand dollars a year have to go around picking up bits of torn paper off the floor and taping them all back together just so that they have a uh, record of the various things that he's um, signed, disagreed with, whatever. Doodled on. <laughs> yeah, apparently he has, and uh, in a way, I sort of empathise with him here because I also, you know, when you are uh, going through the post or something, and you like going through stuff and you like just tear stuff up out of habit, only. You know, I'm not tearing up legal documents that, like, (laughs) pertain to the United States of America. Yeah, you're not, as far as I'm aware, leader of the free world. No. Well, you know, um, I was reading, you know, The Independent, which is a, um, I know it's online only now, but it's still, you know, respected, uh, you know, former newspaper and journalistic outpost. And there is an article, or an opinion piece in it, saying that Jaden Smith should be President of the United States, as in Will Smith's kind of strange son. And at first I thought it was satire. I was like, oh yeah, okay, here we go. Jaden Smith, president, he's the guy who says, how do we have eyes if we can't see or random crap like that? You know, and then I read it and it was serious. And I was just like, what the fuck has happened to the world? (laughs) Where, you know, because now... There is never going back to the pre-Trump era. We now have genuine like political debates about whether Oprah Winfrey or Jaden Smith should run against Donald Trump. Yeah, The, the Rock is it's another like name that gets, gets mentioned. The Rock, yeah. Although I would like President The Rock. <laughs> yeah. Just because I hope that's what they'd refer him to. Uh, yeah, as long as, it, <laughs> as the, the is always in there. <laughs> yeah. It's like Mr. The Rock. <laughs> Mr. President The Rock. <laughs> yeah, I'd enjoy that. I mean, I know that's not his legal name. He doesn't even use that in films anymore. But I'd like to think he'd bring it back if he oh, yeah, ever yeah, became yeah. president. Yeah, if it comes in and he, you know, if he wins, then he has to legally change his name. And I hope every like press conference would be like his old SmackDown days, where it'd be like, <laughs> be like, I'm gonna tell Kim Jong Un to take that nuclear missile, turn it sideways, and stick it up his candy ass. <laughs> <laughs> or people just ask him stuff and he just goes it doesn't matter what you think uh, you know what I want President The Rock <laughs> yeah, you've completely changed your mind all it, all it took was a few bad impressions <laughs> I know what you mean though I, yeah, that's I, one meal but... call me old fashioned but I sort of want politicians you're old fashioned <laughs> I am in very few regards, I, I, <laughs> but I sort of want politicians to have been politicians all their lives. I don't, and 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 don't. I I think there is definitely something to be said for. Not necessarily you know, mean. I don't think they need to have been politicians all their life. No, in yeah. fact, I think in a lot of cases, it's better if they did something else first. Yes, yeah, yeah, I, I agree but, with that. Yeah, I do think you need to like cut your teeth on a few smaller things before running, you know, an entire nation. Be mayor of a city Run or for local governor election. of a state, yeah, yeah, and then be, uh, you know, go for president, or you know, in Britain case, you know, MP for which you kind of have to to be prime minister yeah. at least. You know, be an MP first, uh, but yeah, just the fact that obviously because the American presidency is sort of open to anybody. I think I think the only only conditions that you have to be born in the United States 
and be over a certain age. I can't remember what it is, maybe like 45 or something. It doesn't bode well for Jaden Smith then. No. You know, because obviously Donald Trump is famous for his tweets. Mm. Um, and, you know, once again, you're not going to put the genie back in the bottle. So let's see. These are some of the gems that might come out, well, which have come out of Jaden Smith's mouth or fingers. Things we might get subjected to later. Here's one. When you think about an apple... You also think about the opposite of an apple. I presume that's oranges. I don't know what what the opposite of an apple is. Or an anti-apple, which is like a a nebulous black <laughs> hole of fruit. Of no anti-fruit. What's the opposite of fruit? A Big Mac. Anti-fruit. It's a it's a, it's a <laughs> Big Mac black hole. If everybody in the world dropped out of school, we would have a much more intelligent society. Presumably, he's basing that on all these. And it's one of those things where it's like, have you ever seen like ninety percent of the fucking world? Yeah, <laughs> or like you know, or like, you... it's one of those really great quotes you can only say when you're born into like insane privilege that you don't even notice. Yeah. Have you ever <laughs> found that throughout most of history and throughout most of the world, people aren't in school. People literally drop out of school at like eight so they can go work the fields or something. What the fuck are you talking about? Have you ever left Beverly Hills? No, then this is the philosopher (laughs) king for you. Yeah, never mind the fact that, you know, the education of, you know, girls and young women around the world is one of the most, you know, most proven ways to improve equality. So are we at that sweet spot in life when we can hate both everyone older than us and everyone younger for being younger? Yeah. I feel like we've always been like that, though. Yeah, we... We have been full of rage, you know, quite middle class rage, admittedly. But mm-hmm. so these are just insane ramblings. Twenty third of March, twenty thirteen. Most trees are blue. First of May, twenty thirteen. How can mirrors be real if our eyes aren't real? <laughs> it's like he's he's putting out suggestions for like a really wacky um, fortune cookie company. He's gonna start up. Here we go. There is no nutrients in our food anymore, or in our soil. And then it gets capitals. Or oh, in our water. I mean, has he tested the soil? Does he know water usually doesn't have nutrients? So so you're saying this is the future leader of... This is the future of, of the free world. Apparently, according to him on the 19th of September, 2014, he builds pyramids constantly. I don't believe him. You know? I'm going to go out on a limb there and say that's a lie. That's just a euphemism for taking a tricky shit. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't say I'm particularly familiar with Jaden Smith. I'm not particularly familiar with Will Smith either because my pop culture <laughs> reference is, is non-existent. But, I mean, the, I, I am eternally grateful that I did not have the ability to broadcast my every pointless thought at the you know during my teenage years. Luckily, I... You know, it kept them, you know, bound to a, a series of school notebooks, which I ceremoniously burn, having read them back going, God, I was a real dick. <laughs> but I guess, you know, the young generation had just has to, they just have to be fine with the fact that every stupid thing they, they ever tweeted is just out there for all time. Yeah, but it does give to some of these gems because uh, I just want to. One last oh one. yeah, yeah, I've got more. Third of November, twenty fourteen. I don't want you guys to think because I was born in America that I speak and abide by English grammar. I speak Jaden indefinitely. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm glad that one's there forever because he needs to be constantly reminded that he is an idiot. But if you if you were coddled in a uber rich family with no real awareness of the outside world wouldn't you be an idiot oh i am an idiot and i didn't even need all that <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh, uh, yeah I, i'm glad like i don't know i've always been like a sort of misanthrope. i've never been one for putting statuses and stuff on facebook even when i was like 18 but i'm still quite glad like i grew up like i was already a teenager and all that by the time these things were even introduced because otherwise i would have yeah, I wouldn't want all my stupid shit to be con- like brought up for the rest of time. I don't. I think the world definitely needed to to read your take on quoting Bowling for Soup lyrics at the age of fourteen. Oh yeah, it's just a, a cavalcade of of pointless noise. So, I'm speaking of which, please subscribe to our podcast. <laughs> You've gone in a lot harder on Jaden Smith than you have Donald Trump. I don't know. I guess I've been beaten into submission by the reality of 
Donald Trump. But it's more just the sheer fact that there's genuinely, like, opinion pieces now going on. Like, it's been like, oh, well, we've had one celebrity president. You know what? Fuck it. Let's just troll the internet and see who we shall make our new king based on absolutely no experience, talent, or anything other than... Yeah, this guy says funny things from time to time. Could this could this small rock called Keith be the next great hope? <laughs> but I mean, if if we uh, if we just have to accept that the internet is a baffling thunderstorm of pointless nonsense, do we not also have to accept that part of life going forward is just ignoring the vast majority of it? I think yeah, I have to. Yeah. I don't know. Although sometimes or, it seems like real life getting more like the internet. Or contribute to it with a yeah. pointless podcast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we should just call this shouting into the void. Because <laughs> it's essentially what we're doing. Yes, dear listener, you are the void. And the void is very comforting. Okay, so I think we've exhausted the uh, fountain of memes. That Actually, I'll take that back. We have not exhausted the fountain of memes that is... Jaden Smith and Donald Trump. Well, I think we've done enough for one episode. Uh, please dig us out of the hole. I don't know if I can do that, but I'm going to move from one topic we know very little about, i.e. politics, to another topic I know very little about, and that's history, because... I know that's broad, just all of history. It's <laughs> all great. Of history, yeah. um, so this week I read an article about how the Stegosaurus and the T-Rex never existed at the same time. So little Stephen Stegosaurus had been extinct for about 80 million years before Le Grand Fromage, the teen 9,000 Rex came onto the scene, which A, completely shattered my naive view of the dinosaurs, because in my mind they were just in the world's growliest sitcom before getting cancelled by the commissioning editor's meteor. I, I just sort of imagined it more like a cartoon where all the dinosaurs play along, right? But B, it made me think about the way we look at history, and particularly in school, we learn about time periods almost as sort of individual pieces in a giant jigsaw of the past, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like... Like, like, obviously, history is continuum and things overlap, but our school, for example, you learn, you do Romans, Tudors, and the invention of the Yorkshire pudding, the three main <laughs> historical points in Britain. You don't really get a sense of what was happening concurrently, if you know what I mean. Obviously, I'm not the first person to wonder, that, to wonder about this, so for this topic, I relied on a Reddit thread where they asked what historical events happened at the same time, and most people don't think of overlapping, so I thought I'd mention a few of the ones I found interesting. Jack the Ripper was still on the loose when Nintendo was founded. Oh, uh, but I do understand that one because Nintendo started off making playing cards yeah, yeah. for video games. So they, so they were founded in 1889 as, like you say, a, a, a card manufacturer. You know, the, the very first Paper Mario. And at that point, Jack the Ripper was, uh, was still on the loose. He hadn't murdered anyone since the year before, but he hadn't been caught. And there'd been several crimes since then, that people thought might have been him. So, you know, keeping it light, as always. As always. Um, how about this one? Uh, the same year that Star Wars A New Hope came out, which was, because seeing as you're a, a, a film buff... 1977. Exactly. That was the same year that the last execution by guillotine happened in France. Oh, wow. Presumably it wasn't a member of the... Uh royal family it got over all the cat period. all the cast of the french star wars no <laughs> guerre de toile if my schoolboy french is still as bad as it was which it clearly <laughs> is so if it was a public execution one could arguably go from watching that to seeing you know the first showing of the lightsaber and be like imagine how much easier it'd be to chop heads off with that thing yeah just uh getting ideas guys we don't need the guillotine anymore orville wright inventor of uh well along with his brother, inventor of manned flight and the first ever host of the right stuff, he was still alive when the US dropped the nuclear bombs on Japan in 1945. So you've gone from inventing something to try and get places more quickly to seeing that invention become the thing that destroys humanity, potentially. It'd be like I was starting this podcast and finding out that it gets beamed into space and by the end of our lives, aliens find it and decide it's so appalling that it brings about our destruction. <laughs> Oxford University existed for centuries before the founding of the Aztec Empire. Oh, wow. Go on. Are there any dates of that one? Yeah, so Oxford as a university... Well, it wasn't telling a university, but teaching in some forms hmm. has been go going on there continuously since uh, 1096 when English students were banned from attending the University of Paris. Um, so 
they set up Oxford, and the Aztec em- Empire um, is it's genuinely agreed started in fourteen twenty eight. So that's at le- that's at least sort of between three hundred and four hundred years. Yeah, wow, I didn't know <laughs> of 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 Oxford learning, and some of the you know professor you know university dons have been there <laughs> ever since. Apparently, <laughs> says he bitterly, having <laughs> failed to get into Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, finally, I've got one, one more for you. Between the Roman and the Ottoman empires, that their their existence spans the time between Jesus, Horatio, Christ, and Babe Ruth. Wait, hold on, I don't get that one. So between, like, it, if you if you count up all the time between, well, like, when the Roman Empire was in place, yeah, and the Ottoman Empire was in place, yeah, that covers that covers the, the time between Jesus being alive. And oh. Babe Ruth being alive. Wow. You know, the two twin sides yeah. of humanity. <laughs> yeah, the two most pe- important people in human history. Uh, the thing with that one, though, is the Roman Empire is... I think people often underestimate just how long it lasted. Because, I mean, if you take the... I mean, it all depends what you define as an empire. Because, obviously, a lot of people de- decide it is when you have an actual emperor. But since the Romans were basically a bunch of people... Yeah... Not exactly democratically, but kind of invading neighbors, and then they switch from that system to slightly less democratically elected leaders ruling a country that invaded neighbors. You know, so they didn't make really make much distinction. You're going from about 500 ish BC all the way through to the fall of the West in like the 400s AD, and then the Eastern Empire went all the way through to like 1500. So you got like a solid. 2,000 years of, like, unbroken political, like, entity, which is mad. Yeah, and compared to the Lib Dems, anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you consider the British Empire lasted, what, 200 years, maybe? I mean, it depends when yeah. you, when you uh, count it. It only really sort of started getting going, I suppose, after, like, settling in the Americas. So that was what... <laughs> by by get, getting going, do you mean waging genocide all around the world? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically. Instead of just, you know, doing the usual thing, which was just fucking up Ireland, you know, when they started casting their eyes further afield for more places to fuck, you know, <laughs> they started yeah. going... Can we kill someone else other than the Dutch, please? <laughs> yeah. I do have a thing, a uh, fact that's sort of on the uh, same topic, I suppose, as uh, your ones. Slightly different, but there is more... There is a greater period of time between the pyramids being built and uh, Cleopatra's lifetime than there was between Cleopatra's lifetime and Neil Armstrong landing on the moon. Wow. And at the time that the great pyramids were being built, there were still woolly mammoths growing the earth. Yes, I think so. I think I read that somewhere. Presumably not in the same place, because, I mean, the desert seems like a horrible place to be a woolly mammoth. <laughs> like, I would just get I know. hot. Yeah, but you could shave it. You could shave <laughs> a mammoth. Yeah, then it's not a woolly mammoth. Oh, that's true. Different. Then, yeah. Yeah, then it, it's just like a like a pigeon, basically. Uh, you know, you're going on about how, like, there's eight, what was it, 80 million years between uh, Stegosaurus and uh, T-Rex? Uh, yeah. You know, just to sort of get an idea of how you know, incomprehensibly, like, long these timescales are. If you compressed Earth's, I think, 4.3 billion years of history um, into, like, one year, January the 1st is when Earth, you know, started, and, um, you know, midnight at December 31st is, like, right this second. Humanity showed up at 11.55. Oh, sorry. Humanity showed up at about 11 o'clock, as in humans as apes and, you know, distinct from apes. 11.55 is when human civilization actually sort of began. But, I mean, because obviously that's New Year's Eve. That's when you want to turn up, because there's oh, so much hype <laughs> around the party. The people who get there at seven, they're just wasting so much time. They're watching the fireworks. No, not the fireworks. Oh, yeah, fireworks. They're watching. watching Jewel Holland's yeah, yeah. Nanny. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're watching uh, John Legend's Sulk next to a piano. Um, <laughs> you whereas... how wild my New Year's Eve <laughs> song. That's my go-to yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, I remember we must have been... I don't know, 15 or 16, and you were around at mine and we had a, f- a few other friends. You know, N- New Year's Eve, we thought we'd, you know, stay up to midnight and watching the New Year, and we missed it. We were just talking, <laughs> and then we looked up, and it was like quarter past 12. We went, oh, oh, yeah. oh well, <laughs> back yeah, to Mortal Kombat. <laughs> 
Yeah, I feel like we had our priorities right. Yeah, it's the same tactics we did with e- before every exam. Oh, <laughs> that got me before... through. Mortal Kombat before... got me through my GCSEs and A-levels. Yeah, we'd go around, play Mortal Kombat, and then go, we should probably go do our exams. Yes. Best and we'd system. always have, th- no we'd always have th- about thumb exams. war before we went in. Good luck, thumb war. Good luck, thumb war. It turned out all right. You know, we, yeah. we both did well in exams. We went on to uni, and um, I... Um, continued to have legs. So yes, you did. All, all successes all well. and exactly. <sighs> but you know, stocking shelves is still fun. I feel like every one of these episodes just you know things go well for a bit and then all of a sudden we just break down. <laughs> <laughs> the existential start... terror just gets to us. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> What are we well, doing? For, you know, for a while we can talk about dinosaurs and idiots on Twitter, and then I forget my life, and then it all comes credit and go, "Oh yeah, I'm still me in this body, living this life that never mm-hmm. seems to end or get better." So, Chris, what's your next topic? <laughs> um, what's the furthest you've ever gone to not admit that you've made a mistake? Like, you know, have you ever hidden something and been like, "Nope, definitely wasn't me." When. I was 12. I stole a bottle of vodka from from somewhere else in the house and I got caught with it and I tried to... The, the best excuse I came up with was, uh, oh no, I just wanted a drink of water and I couldn't find any glasses, so I had to steal this bottle and I, I emptied it out, washed it out and I had a, a bottle of water. <laughs> but obviously... <laughs> It still smells. That it that still make, smells that, of forty percent alcohol. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just very conveniently sick. <laughs> um, that makes my life sound so bleak. Um, <laughs> and it was. Why do you ask? <laughs> well, on a less depressing topic, uh, a. Uh, a mother in Sweden got a tattoo of her child's name, as many you know parents do. Her mm-hmm. kid is called Kevin, because apparently he was born 50 years ago. But <laughs> the tattoo said Kelvin. The uh, logical thing would be to, you know, get the tattoo fixed, changed, or whatever. But, um, or change the name of the kid. Well, yes, that's her logic. <laughs> she legally changed her kid's name from Kevin to Kelvin. I'm with her on that one. <laughs> How is that the easiest yeah. option? Because a tattoo is permanent, like like a, <laughs> the a name. Oh, that was dark. Well, no, no, not, not, the, not, the, not the kid isn't. Like, it depends how old the kid was um, when she had the name I think changed. She was six years if it's old. like days old, six years old, I believe. That's Five. fine. They don't care. Uh, they might. Also, Kelvin, you're you're naming them after a temperature scale. Yeah, so they're either gonna have a scientific sort of life because obviously that's how names work. Because you and I are both called Chris, and we've turned out. The most <laughs> religious of all Christians. <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. I do you know. Love... If, if, if there is one constant in this life, it is nominative determinism. Yeah, I know what that means. It means, like, your name is, is somehow linked to what you do. So if you're... So you know how, like, surnames came about because of jobs? Okay. So, like, if, if you're called Baker, then it means that you... you probably don't do the Atkins diet. The, yeah, it's, it's just the idea that your name plays a part in the, in what you go on to be. So my surname, for example, is a word for the dregs you get at the bottom of wine, which <laughs> does link in to the anecdote I told earlier as a 12-year-old alcoholic. There was actually a thing I read about that Freakonomics, I think it was. It included a story of a guy who named his kids winner and loser but loser went on to have a much more successful life i i guess because it's sort of doing the bullies work for them mm. you know if he'd if he'd been called schmoozer then you go haha your name sounds like loser yeah. if you go, your name's loser then you need more inventive bullies but do, no that's the original story yeah. i'm absolutely with the the woman on this one okay. i first of all i don't foresee me having kids anytime soon you've got to as i understand it lay with woman before that <laughs> happens and that's not really an option. Um, but, I mean, I'm even less likely to tattoo the name of... I've got a bad memory, but I can remember one name per kid, I think, without having them indelibly marked. Where on a, where on a did she have the tattoo done? Uh, on her forearm. 
you know, so she can check it easily. I mean, maybe an alternative could have been just above that in a nice cursive script, just to have my son's name is not. Yeah, see, that would have worked. That would, yeah, that would have been fine. Um, or after, or underneath it, it would be a stupid name to call someone. Yeah, <laughs> the um, the thing with names, though, you know, because I said you know, Kevin is obviously a normal, incredibly dull name. Apologies to any Kevins out there. But the thing with, you know, we often laugh at weird names. You know when celebrities give their kids weird names or it's like, oh, why would you not give somebody an incredibly boring name like Chris? But the thing is, since names are supposed to be like a unique identifier, like weird names actually make far more sense than, you know, the approved list of usually biblical names that we go with. Because I I don't know about you, but I literally, if somebody yells Chris, I just ignore them at this stage. Because there were always several Chris's in, I was going to say, in any given room. <laughs> That'd be a bit weird. <laughs> but, the, you when, know. when you're alone at night. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, if somebody yells, you know shouts Chris in the street or something, there's, you know, there's a fair chance there's a completely different Chris also on the street, that they're actually yelling at. I think particularly our age, because it was the most pop, most popular name the year we were born. Mm-hmm. In my class at school, I think there were seven Chrises, yep. and you weren't even one of them. You were yeah. in another class that had four or five other Chrises. I've got two cousins, similarly aged, called Chris. So we couldn't even limit it to one a family, <laughs> you know. I do love that, you know, um, you know, Fury Road, when it came out, you know, and it got all the accolades of being, you know, it's talked about in like a serious film rather than just an action film and all that. Even though the characters just have, like, gloriously insane names. Like, what is it? Immortan Joe. What is it? Splendid Angerad. And stuff like that is just, like, genuine. And you like it. I don't know how George Miller came up with the names, but he must have just, just like, taken just random words and just shoved them in a blender and be like, boom, here we go. Oscars await. That's clearly where we're going wrong with our uh, creative adventures. All our characters have been called, like, Ian and Dan and... and- you Kelvin. Know, Kevin. We'll change Kevin um, to Kelvin and we'll be good. Yeah, Kelvin, the, I don't know, slaughter bl- blunderbuss. Mm-hmm. And then Oscars, please. 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 Okay, so I think that's enough about names. Over to you. I'm going to try and be uh, less negative this time, or at least that was my intention. And then I looked at my notes and realised what my second topic was. So starting next week, I'm going to be more positive. Chris, I don't know if you're like me, in that sometimes you worry about what you've done with your life. I've got very few accomplishments to my name. I can make a decent carbonara. Well, that's good. Yeah. It, that's you know, a skill I only learned recently. Yeah, the trick is to um, just, you know, just make a carbonara. It's yeah. pretty easy, actually. <laughs> to remember the spaghetti. Um, yeah, yeah, otherwise it's just <laughs> eggs, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> eggs and cheese. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I can make a decent carbonara. I know the lyrics to over a hundred eel songs. I've been to both Lincoln and Leeds. So have you ever been to uh, Southampton yeah. and Scunthorpe though? I have not. No tiny temper then. I've been to no, Southampton, but I've never been to Scunthorpe. Are you? Is that you talking or are you quoting? Well, I'm quoting Tiny Temper, but it also applies to my life as well. And it's deep lyrics like that, which is why he's so famous. Yes, <laughs> he is, and I. <laughs> Pop culture reference. I don't even know if it's a film, if it's a person, if it's... Some kind of owl. I mean, that would be a, a sort of a curveball to, to quote some kind of owl. But the fact that, you know, I don't even know who Small Outrage is, you know, it proves exactly that I there's a lot I haven't done with my life. Yes. Um, Sorry to derail your list of accomplishments. No, 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 it's it's... It's it's all just further proof that I have so much left to learn. And you know, sometimes late at night, you you lie there worrying about your place in the world, and if you're ever going to get around to finishing that erotic novel about elephant human hybrids getting it on and getting it off in space. My second topic is 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 a is a quote from Julius Caesar that proves that some of the most famous people throughout history, and this is a dude who's you know got two months. That's a whole sixth of the calendar named after him that they've worried about that very August and July. I thought August was uh, Augustus. Was that not his... uh, How's his heir? um, I thought that was his imperator name. No. Julius and then Augustus used to be Octavian. I am an idiot. (laughs) No, we're learning and we're all on a learning journey. (laughs) You're right. 
thank you for humbling me, humbling me with your knowledge. <laughs> well, for once, See, we wanted is... to be vaguely accurate. <laughs> yeah, vaguely for the f- first time so far. <laughs> Actually, we'll introduce some facts into this. See, this is why I don't have any months named after me. Hmm. But you do have Christmas. That's true, and my mass is is fast. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was the most stupid thing I've ever said. It all makes sense now. That's what it stands for. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Oh, in a long, at some point. <laughs> I hope so, but in a long list of stupid things, that is the stupidest thing I've said so far. <laughs> so, this is from Plutarch's historical, historical accounts of Caesar. When Caesar read of Alexander the Great's life, mm-hmm. he burst into tears. His friends were surprised and asked him the reason of it. Do you think, said he, I have not just cause to weep, when I considered that Alexander at my age had conquered so many nations, and I have all this time done nothing that is memorable. And I found that strangely uplifting, that even these people who accomplished um, historically important things, if morally dubious things, can still feel that insecure about not having accomplished what they perhaps dreamed of, that we can all just accept that there will always, that every single person has un- unfinished business with their ambitions so hooray everyone's insecure but also hooray there's still time to crush a democracy and become dictator for life yes and then this is where you tell me that wasn't him it was actually no no that, another that caesar was, that was julius it, it, the same same dude that invented the salad the trick is to use lots of knives so yeah so i don't know if if you either you chris or you the listener feel that oh well i've actually been every but i don't actually celebrate my birthday for a couple of thing, reasons Really, one, it always fought, well, obviously it doesn't now, but when we were younger, it fell during the middle of exams every year, which meant nobody actually wanted to do anything because everyone was too busy. At least that's the excuse they gave me. And, and this, you bought it every year. Yes. But the second reason is because every year I always end up looking at what famous people have done by my age and getting wildly depressed. <laughs> you know, it's when you look at like... Yeah. And some, you know, it doesn't even have to be good accomplishments. Like, it can, like you say, be incredibly mor- morally dubious, but at least they've done something. They, you know, they've made a mark of some description. I mean, this was a couple of years now, but like by the time he was my age, Aaron Hernandez had grown up, become an NFL player, played in the Super Bowl, murdered somebody, gone to prison, <laughs> joined the Bloods, and then killed himself. <laughs> it's like morally dubious, but you packed a lot into those like twenty five years or so. And I'm like, yeah, now so at that age, went... you had also grown up. There is exactly. still time, and uh, to go well, on, yeah. uh, you know, a... on a rampage. I'd rather not. You know, he's not exactly a hero, but you know, he's packed. He packed some stuff into that. You know, Mike Tyson, world champion of uh, boxing by twenty. Who else? Like Julia said, Alexander the Great. By the time he was my age, he was already about. I think he'd got through to. Don't know if he got as far as Afghanistan yet, but he's definitely in Persia. Julius Caesar himself, he'd. Um, you know, he once got when he was young. He actually got kidnapped by pirates. Somehow, used his ridiculous charisma to like order the pirates about, demanded they increase his ransom because what they asked for was insultingly low, and then apparently can't like told them that he'd come back and murder them all anyway. And then when he got released, he did go get a fleet together and come back and murder them all. Apparently he sort of laughed and joked like, oh god, when this all blows over, I'm going to crucify you. And that's what he did. Yeah. Yeah. Came back and went, guys, I wasn't shitting around. Don't you dare <laughs> ever try and sell me for as low as 20 denarii or whatever it was. I, I'm a 50 denarii. They probably didn't use the denarii by then. It was probably an earlier currency. Sister, she's... You've got to cure that with cranberry juice, I think. <laughs> um careening towards 30 uh, you just start going right well that's every single player in the Premier League <laughs> just about every band in existence 80% of film stars and he's like all oh, younger than me or you know or you know their careers started and they had their big hit or whatever well it's younger than me I'm not I do not deal well with aging <laughs> no I mean I, I know I'm not the right person to talk you down from the ledge given that I reserved our spot on the <laughs> ledge in the first place I mean it is it is uniquely depressing that every year there's a new crop of anywhere between 16 and 19 year old pop stars that become you know multi-millionaires and the mm-hmm. best-selling people 
you know, ever with some irritating pop song that inexplicably is streamed a, a billion times. And you go, who is this sperm with a fringe? <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, and why are they in a band called Sperm with a Fringe? That is a terrible name. Well, at least I'm not alone in 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 thinking in worrying about. I suppose I, I, everyone worries about this sort of thing. You oh, you know, next year, next year. Okay, all no, right, ne- next year, next year is not going to be our year, and then mm-hmm. you die. But there, I mean, there are plenty of examples of people who accomplished great. It was st- started later in life. I think Harrison Ford was quite old when he started acting yeah was he you're more well, likely to know he was i can't um, i don't alan know rickman. Ex- I alan rickman was 50 was. before he got cast yeah alan rickman was all 40, 40, 40, 40s, 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 40s yeah harrison ford i think i tried to be an actor given up become a carpenter but i think he became a set car- you know like a set designer carpenter so it's still sort of in filmish and then he got his big he got his big break by because he was fitting sets, I think, for George Lucas, and George Lucas used asked him to read some lines during auditions for the other actors, <laughs> and he ended up being like, you know what, you're pretty good at this, <laughs> and also looked like a young Harrison Ford. <laughs> he did, which which helps. Han Solo was almost played by Kurt Russell, who is the greatest actor of all time. Please tell me you know who Kurt Russell is. I know the name. Oh, I could not tell you yeah, one. He has a glorious <laughs> mullet. Yet you say that like it's a good thing because I it, consider the mullet as a war crime. <laughs> it's the greatest hairstyle in history. It's business at the front and party at the back. What more do you want? It is 360 degrees of abhorrence. In my room 101, there would only be a giant mullet. <laughs> like as in the fish. And tuna. <laughs> I've never seen him with cornrows or a mohawk but he can uh he when he plays cowboys and old-timey things he does grow an absolutely glorious like you know that he, and the pump yeah fresh. well you know that one where it's like um you got like the proper sideburns then the handlebar mustache like sort of all like into one glorious frontier beard yeah the o- the only like good um, like preset beard in Fallout, yes, basically. Exactly. He, Kurt Russell would make an excellent American Civil War general. F- like facially, facial hair wise. Yeah, <laughs> I have no idea about his tactics <laughs> or his politics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, facial hair wise, he'd be there. Do you think that's how they used to decide it? Honestly, like, I think we should just do every single episode about Kurt Russell. <laughs> I don't know who he is. It's I'll just find more time. facts about him. <laughs> I'll share okay. one with you each week. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe this is going to be a regular feature. <laughs> oh, don't hold me to that. I'll forget. By next no, no, no. Week. I- I'm going to remind you. Next week, you're going to have your two main topics, which you can be at anything, and I won't know what, what they're going to be. <laughs> I think you do I- now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would like a bonus mini Kurt Russell topic, please. Okay, all right, yeah, I could probably do that. And you're going to do one a week, and <laughs> until if the heat you death can of the get... universe. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you if you can find something genuinely interesting about Kurt Russell every week until episode twenty, then the next time we meet up, I will buy um you a gift. That was so vague. <laughs> I'll I'll buy I'll I'll buy dinner next time we meet. Okay. Right, I'll try. Listeners, as as you as my silent witnesses, was he in silent witness? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Right. Okay. I I my homework for this week is to Google <laughs> Kurt Russell. Was he in? Spartacus. It's in the original. Not the original, as in like one hundred eight, like BC. The original film? Uh, I guess. I, I don't know where I plucked that from. No, just that was uh, some... Kirk Douglas. Michael Douglas' is dad. And did I just say two names that you don't know? I saw your knowledge of old films used to be better than this. Like, you never, like, knew... You've never been a fan of, like, you know, Marvel films or whatever. But that's why we have many conversations so about classic films. What you didn't realise is I was silent through all of them. <laughs> Or I'd go, do you fancy a brew? And you just carry on talking. <laughs> About Kurt Russell's glorious facial hair. <laughs> yeah, it's just been... It, is, it has been the hairy glue of our friendship. That is a phrase I'm not comfortable with. <laughs> it came out of my mouth and I thought... You know what? I do not feel good saying that. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Just to wrap it back on topic, Kurt Russell was not a late starter because he was actually a, he began as a Disney star, I think. You just squandered one of your bonus Kurt Russell <laughs> facts. Yeah, no, You're but I wanted, to keep, famous, it, I wanted to keep it on topic. That was it. I wanted right, to well, loop it back I, in. I hope you've enjoyed the Kurt Russell special <laughs> and all future episodes will be the Kurt Russell special. When we started this podcast, I thought it was going to be a light-hearted, you know, internet show and tell. Turns out, by episode seven, we've found our true calling <laughs> and I am excluded from that calling. <laughs> Yeah, no, I like how, you know, when we uh, when we did come up with, you know, we said we'd do this, we sort of said, no religion, no politics, I managed to break both of those. <laughs> cooking with grief would be an ironic title, because there'd be no cooking or grief, but you're constantly on the verge of a mental breakdown. <laughs> and we try and be interested in, like, share knowledge and facts, and all we've come up with is that I know a, <laughs> a disturbing amount about Kurt Russell. Oh, this has been a complete shambles. What are we doing? Why, why are we doing this? Oh, who's even listening to this? Help us. Make us stop. Well, listeners, for, the, for those betting... On who was gonna have the, the the first proper mental breakdown first? <laughs> who would have thought it'd be the same, Chris? <sighs> oh, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> That's endless. I don't want to. Oh, <laughs> Both gone insane. (laughs) (laughs) All right, are we hitting stop? Oh, right. Guard our thoughts slightly. So that was uh, that was the last of the four topics we had for you this week. And as ever, we you know investigated them with a journalistic rigor unmatched by any other publication, and delved deep into the topics that we are so famously uh, studious of. I feel like now would be a good time to mention that I haven't slept properly for about four days. <laughs> that could explain it. You might have mentioned that before we sat down to record, yeah. but I would have said, look, get a power snooze, and then let's get our thoughts before you open the crazy Kurt Russell can of worms <laughs> and gorge yourself silly on those worms. But anyway, thank you for, for listening to this, and hopefully we'll you'll uh, listen to the next one as well. It's been fun. So I've been Chris. I've also been Chris. And neither of us have been Kurt Russell. (laughs) Sorry, it's got really weird. (laughs) Shall we we say goodbye? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, bye. Bye. Oh, God. Thank you for listening to this episode of Cooking with Grief. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to recommend it to a friend. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can email cookingwithgrief at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter. That's at cookingwithgrief. If you'd like to hear more episodes, then please subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And if you've got the time, then it'd be great if you could leave us a review on iTunes. Thank you.